Come with us for some fine dining at the Hydra Majestic Hotel on the edge of the Great Dividing Range west of Sydney in this episode of Dining Down Under. Welcome to another episode of Dining Down Under. I'm Vic Cherikov. Mark McCluskey. Benjamin Christie. We're cooking today from recipes up in the Blue Mountains at a place called the Hydro Majestic Hotel. And uh, it's one of the real gems of the Blue Mountains, both for its age, its architecture, and also some of its really interesting food. Why is it called the Blue Mountains? The Blue Mountains? Oh, well, the Blue Mountains are blue because of the eucalyptus trees, the gum trees, actually evaporate essential oils, gum oil, gum leaf oil, and that changes the refraction of the light, and they look blue. That's very interesting, Vic. I've lived there for a few years now and never noticed that. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> well, you've noticed they're blue. I've noticed they're blue. Now you know, you know why. I know why, that's those, right. those essential oils also burn and basically help uh, start fires all over the place. In fact, we were really lucky to get out of the Hydro Majestic Hotel because fires came through the very next day, um, and you'll see a little bit more later. Meanwhile, what are you cooking, Mark? Well, tonight, Vic, I'll be cooking um, an oven-baked pumpkin frittata, Japanese pumpkin. Now, with the pumpkin, we're going to um, put a bit of oil on there, crust it, and bake it on the barbecue. It's quite an interesting um, way of cooking a pumpkin, and we're going to layer it with seven or eight different flavours, Vic. So using the barbecue as an oven this As time. an oven, yes. Convection cooking. OK. Benjamin? I'm doing a cassolette, which is normally... Uh, served in a silver or a china dish, but I'm going to be doing a little bit of a variety on, on that. As we do. Uh, and I'm going to be having some pepperberries, yep. which are native pepperberries. Yep. Uh, a number of root, root vegetables. So this is vegetarian? Vegetarian, yep. with, uh, with a stock. And I'm also going to be making a, a damper with rye berries and blue cheese. That's terrific. And the damper? is basically a bread. An Australian bread. Australian-style bread. Actually, a damper is when your parents come home and, and spoil the party, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that is a damper. So this, uh, this, <laughs> this damper is cooked in a camp oven, but we're doing it on the stove on the top. Stove tonight. Easy again. Whereas traditionally, a damper would have been cooked in the coals. We're finishing off with my dish, which is a wattle seed pancake, a flapjack stack with a few berries, a little bit of syrup, and we're finishing up with some native Australian peppermint ice cream. So uh, have a look at this, the Hydro Majestic Hotel on Dining Down Under. The Hydro Majestic Hotel's up in Medlow Bath in the Blue Mountains, and it's worth stopping by for the view, the food, and the architecture. This place is really amazing. They spared no expense, just look at these murals, which depict the history of hunting. There's a hunting party for you. The whole place was built by a guy called Mark Foy, who was a retailer down in Sydney at the time. And he actually fell in love with some ceilings, I think at the Chicago Fair, and they feature in a massive hall in a theatre. Luckily, the whole lot wasn't lost because a fire burnt right up to the back door the very next day that we were there. Risotto is always popular, and this is a pumpkin risotto made only on vegetable stock and flavoured with Mediterranean herbs including bay leaf, thyme and sage. The pumpkin cubes are stir-fried to bring out the caramel notes of the sugars. Keep the pan hot so the pumpkin doesn't get oily. The arborio rice gets toasted and oiled so that the grains separate and then stock is added in small amounts and then cooked out to end up with a creamy texture of well-made risotto. Plating up goes with height adding visual appeal to the flavour mix. Flavours finish with toasted nuts and Parmesan cheese. 
Pasta is a favourite dish of mine and this morel and onion cream sauce was to live for. The tomato, grilled capsicum, sliced snow peas and garden herbs add colour and interest. Onto the dessert. The semi-sweet pancakes form the base and a wrap for a sweet berry jam. Adding some extra whole fruit chunks to the sugary mix keeps these fruits firm for texture and bulk. The filled and folded pancake gets extra compote lavishly smothered on top and then finished with some fresh whipped cream. The chocolate mesh cage and mint garnish finish the dessert. How about this for a really simple dish made deliciously appealing through presentation. Vic, where are you at? Mate, well, I thought I'd start off with the pumpkin, the Japanese pumpkin. I'm going to just put a bit of oil on that. There we go. Drizzle that nicely. A little bit of salt. So that's going to add crunch to the skin? It's going to add crunch to the skin and also impart a lot of flavour into the, or infuse a lot of flavour into the pumpkin, Vic. Pumpkin is quite a bland, um, quite a bland flavour. It really does need a bit of help. So we're going to take that out to the barbecue. Put it on the barbecue. The barbecue is on one side cold, the other side hot, creating convection. Sounds great. Let's go. Love baking in the oven on the, uh, the barbecue. Great way of cooking. Right then. I'm going to put the um, pumpkin on the barbecue on the cold side. Close the door. That's cranking, that is. Probably, as we can see by the gate, that's about 250 degrees. That's, that's, that's quite a hot oven. And we got some vegetables that we're going to throw on as well. Now with the vegetables, what are we going to do is add some native Australian flavours to that. We're going to be using red desert seasoning and wildfire spice. With the red desert seasoning and the wildfire spice, it has pepperberry, pepper leaf and paprika. While I do this, we'll go back to Ben and see what he's doing in the studio. What we're going to make now is damper, putting a small hole in the middle. I'm going to fill it with milk and I'm going to work, work the flour, self-raising flour, into the milk. Just add a little bit of salt. Secret ingredient I found with the damp, it really picks it up. If you get the salt, it just won't work anywhere near as well. And we're just working it in really roughly. So what, the trick's not to overwork the dough? No, it's an unleavened bread. So that means basically that it hasn't been, the gluten hasn't been worked out of it. Now you can obviously use uh, plain flour and add all the, um, the leavening agents effectively, a uh, bit of bicarb, a bit of tartaric acid if you want, but it's a lot easier to use uh, self-raising flour. Yeah, it's a lot cheaper too. <laughs> <laughs> so that's sort of coming together now. Just add a bit more. So it's almost like a biscuit crumb there. At the moment it is. Yep. And you can always use a bit of water if you need. You may need a little a tad more, but it's coming together. Just a bit more water, mate, if you need it. Okay. How do you uh, know it's that the bush oven's too hot? Yep. Well, we're cooking this in the uh, your, in the camp oven, so I can actually prepare that for you. The uh, it's pretty warm already, but uh, it's starting to cool down. I'll. Put a little bit more heat onto it. The trick is, is, is you also got to heat the lid as well. Heat the lid is really important. And by putting in a little bit of flour and just watching and timing roughly how long it takes to brown is going to give you a fair gauge of the, uh, the heat in the oven. We actually want that to start browning a little bit quicker than it is now. So that's going to be about ready when you're ready, Benjamin. Won't be a moment. And don't forget the rye berries are going to add a little bit of moisture as well. And the blue cheese. And the blue cheese to already crumb to go in. Yep. 
What are you uh, going to be putting together? OK, well, I'm doing a simple uh, pancake mix, again, a flour-based product. Flour, a little bit of salt. We need something to bind our mix. And so we have an egg. And I'm going to make the pancake mix with milk again. Just work that in. If you add the milk slowly and actually make it almost pasty, and then keep adding it so you won't get any lumps and we'll whisk that towards the end. And also, I'm going to flavour this with wattle seed. I, ne I need to say that carefully. It's wattle seed. Wattle or acacia seed is um, the flavouring... Actually, it's not. It's the wattle underneath a bird, I think, isn't it? A <laughs> bird's throat. Um, no, this is wattle seed. And the idea is to flavour the pancake mix with a little bit of this product here. This is a roasted seed, gives it a flavour of coffee, chocolate, hazelnut. It can go in dry here and get mixed into the pancake mix. Then it's important for me to rest this for a little while and as it cooks, when we're cooking off the pancakes, it'll actually go to an interesting brown pancake. And Benjamin, how are you doing with the Nelly, Nelly put together. I just put the cheese and the rye berries in. Okay. It's taking a little bit more water. Mark, how are you doing out the back? Mate, it's coming along nicely. I'm just about to bring the pumpkin in, Vic. Okay. And we'll also be seeing the damper go into the camp oven. Bring these beautiful charcoal vegetables back. Mate, you might have to uh, take the car to the spot there. That looks and smells awesome. Oh, the aromatics are great, Vic. They really are. Mate, yeah, pretty much. And give me a hand. Yeah, mate. We've got our damper going in. So uh, some of these recipes inspired by the Hydro Majestic Hotel. I'm going to start by putting a little bit of olive oil in the pan. I'm going to chuck a whole heap of vegetables into the pan. And I'm also going to put in some, uh, some native pepper berries as well. One of my favourite spices, add a bit of zing. Not too many though. Ah, oh, mate. Could All have the twice. better. You could have done with twice that. It's enough. Have the... I'm have... just going to squeeze in over your shoulder and cook off a few pancakes. We have our flapjacks cooking away. This is a non-stick pan, so we actually don't even need oil, but if you're going to use oil, it's just a light spray. It'll keep going. So good for the waistline there, Vic. Good for the waistline, except for the lashings of sour cream I'm going to put on at the end of it. <laughs> or ice cream. So we just want to caramelise the root vegetables there before putting the stock and the, uh, the rest of the vegetables in there. So we're looking for that strong caramelisation. Looking good. So this is a really simple dish. The recipe's on the website, so you can always get the ingredients there, but you can also play with it a lot. It's the kind of uh, dish you could use with all the rest leftovers at the end of the week. Yep, clean out that fridge, the crisper at the bottom of the fridge. <laughs> Doesn't that seem to accumulate? <laughs> I really love these sauce bottles. Stick a few uh, sauces and batters and so on in them. They make it really easy, don't they? They sure do, Vic. Seasoning. I've That's heard that um, salt is meant to bring out the sweetness in the onion. It does, especially with these Spanish onions as well. They're, they're already quite a sweet, a sweet, a, a sweet, sweet onion, yes. They're sweeter than normal onions, yes. they're not too bitter either. So mate, where are you at? Mate, I'm just going to start off by whisking my eggs quite briskly. Just incorporate an, an egg mixture here, eggs, a bit of cream, and then moving right over to the pumpkin and we're going to layer the pumpkin. With the pumpkin, we're going to throw in some of this zucchini and eggplant. Now, with the different layers, we're going to have a different native Australian flavour. We're using wild thyme, alpine pepper, lemon myrtle and red desert seasoning. All aromatic, pungent flavours, very complex. So this is a fair dinkum frittata. Fair dinkum frittata, mate, that's it. So we're going to layer that in. Quite nicely there, different flavour on every layer. So the way you eat this is going to be pretty interesting at the end of the day. It is. You're going to have to stand it up, eat through the kaleidoscope of flavours. <laughs> Love it. 
There we go. Just put that in. Benjamin. The stock's just gone in. We're just waiting it to bring to the boil. Tip this egg mixture in and take it straight to the oven. There we go. Oh, well, let, let's, let's throw a few native berries in there as well for a bit of textural crunch. There oh. we go. Okay, are you able to flip them? Mate, yeah, it's just, uh, I think I need oil on my <laughs> spatula, not on the pan. Let's go to the oven with this. You're right. In the oven, half an hour, 160 degrees. So you wouldn't cook that with the, uh, the lid of the pumpkin back on? You could do, Vic. I feel that it cooks more evenly this way, mate. Okay. So the guys are daring me to flip a few a few pancakes here, so I suppose, I suppose I'd better flip them. Let's see how you go. Give it time, give it time. So I've also got uh, a little bit of my coolie reduced down, so that's going to finish the uh, flapjack stack. We're um, also looking at some native Australian peppermint ice cream to garnish this dessert. And my flapjack should be just about ready to flip, I hope. I think so, you want to see me flip? Oh. Caught that. Very good, mate. Very good. Very good. I'm really good at pizza day, too. Six on the ceiling? Yeah, every time. <laughs> <laughs> the damper looks like it's nearly done. Oh. How do these, um, these rye berries here, are these glassate or something, mate? Yeah, they they're soaked in, a, soaked in a sugar syrup. They actually uh, even go a little bit translucent. Mm. Really mm. enhances the flavour of the sugar, doesn't it? And again, you can do this with cranberries. You can do it with a whole host of, uh, of interesting berries just slowly increase the concentration of sugar. We'll stick the recipe for that on the website as well. With that, just, just a, a quick thing, Vic. Would there be a possibility of adding the fruit into the pancake mixture? Would you ever do that? You can do that. No okay. problem at all. Don't forget the sugar, going in a bit extra sugar is going to possibly burn a little bit more readily, but you could blend it, zip it through, okay. and it'll work fine. No problem. So we have our pumpkin frittata Cooking in away. the oven. Benjamin, how far are you away? Well, the damper's now done, I'll just check base of it. How are you going to tell whether, whether, whether it's done or not? The best way is to give the base a bit of a tap, the hollow sound, and that sounds like it's pretty well sounds done. Sounds like it's done to yep. perfection. <laughs> okay. So that's that, and the cassoulet is nearly ready. Excellent. And I need a few more pancakes just to catch up, and we're cooking with gas. Good stuff. Let's start putting these together. The um, interesting thing with pancakes, so uh, most of the flavours will work uh, with pancakes. You can put herb flavours in there, make them savoury. Really? I've you never can, done uh, that, actually, Vic. You've never done savoury. Never done savoury pancakes. It. Take the mickey out of me. Thanks very much, fellas. Okay, we're pretty much ready to uh, keep it going. And so our dishes here will be, finally, the pumpkin frittata, the cassoulet, inspired Excellent. from the Orient Express, with the rye berry. So finally, Japanese pumpkin frittata to simplify it, white bean cassoulet with berry and blue cheese damper, acacia or wattle seed flapjacks with wild berries and peppermint cream. Enjoy that. We're going to start off with slicing the pumpkin frittata, standing it up so we eat through the kaleidoscope of flavours as we've mentioned before. Bit of peppery rocket on the plate. And I'm going to add some of the wonderful bush tomato chutney. In the bush to tomato chutney, we've got a caramel, caramel, a little, a little, a little, caramel and tamarillo flavour. I'll get there. There we go. So we put that on the plate. Looking good. It is. And over to you, Ben. What are you doing? I'm just putting the cassoulet into a cassoulet dish. And <laughs> is, that tauto is that tautology? It sure is. So, a bit of ribey on there, mate. Some of the glace variety. A little bit of sauce, fruit compote. This is a whole bunch of different menus and recipes that we'll be using with ice cream. Actually, we might even leave that sit there because it ain't going to stand. Great. You ready, Benjamin? Sure am. Hey, I'm getting dessert again. I love it. I'll sit here. Why not? Have you got the damper with you? Sure have. Hey, Jared. How are you going, guys? Mate, we've we got a Sweet. surprise for you. Looks good, eh, guys? Looks fantastic, mate. Take a seat. Grab cool. the light. The interesting thing here is that Jared is a baker by trade. He's been helping us out the back, and he's never cooked damper 
apart from today when he actually prepared this particular one for us as a quick one uh, and a standby damper for the, uh, for the show. So mate, you could break the bread. I'm often asked what makes a bread a damper? Well the word comes from a practice of bakers in old England. They used to dampen down their ovens at the end of a day's baking by covering the leftover coals with ash. It's the damper with its toasted crust, the cinnamon and clove rye berries and the pungent blue cheese which I think really makes Benjamin's cassoulet. You could replace the rye berries with cranberries if they're easier to get. Mark's frittata is a real winner and a regular meal of mine. I love experimenting with different herbs and spices in each of the layers so the whole dish really sings. And as for my flapjacks, well I can't wait for next Sunday's brunch when I'm sure I'm going to make them again. Try something Mate, I would love to try the bread. Yeah, Just throw a piece. Looks Looking great. great. So smell the blue cheese coming out there. Again, we've got the recipes Blood on the berry. website and it's been another exercise of uh, literally taking international food and turning it upside down on Dining Down Under. That's right.